Hello, hello everyone. A very good night to all of you. This is Sunday night, uh, and here I am again. My name is Marco. I'm from here from uh, Toronto Spiritist Society, and we're going to be continuing this incredible journey through illuminated prayers. And Vanessa Saloni is already uh, giving us a little uh, thumbs up here. Hi, Vanessa. Hello, everyone. Um, as um, as we've we've been learning through this uh, you know, very interesting prayers that we've been studying in the last few days, we understand today a little bit more about prayers. And as you know, prayers are something that connects us. Right? It is a con mental connection. It is a law. It's like a divine part of the divine laws, and also is an act of charity. It is an act of love. It is so many things together. And we're now through examples, we're learning, you know, how to, uh, how to pray, when to pray, where to pray, right? And we know already that we can do that. We talked about it. We can do that all the time, basically, right? So whenever, you know, we can actually s stop for two seconds and raise our mental currents up above, right? So we can establish a connection high sunshine yeah i see the clapping hands there so it's very good to be with you, all of you guys today so i decided to do a little recap today because it's been 11 days now that we're doing this right and why don't we go step back into the spirits book just so we can refresh our minds right i know carol carol did a great job yesterday um talking about the the mother's prayer Right, and a rescue mission to a spirit that has been um, going through some very challenging times um, in his own uh, thoughts and how lost he got if he got into that state. Today, we're going to move a little step forward in the same book. So we're going to be talking about um, the um, uh, Workers of Life Eternal by Andrea Luis to Chico Xavier. We're going to go through chapter number nine. Hello, John. Hi, nice to see you around. Um, so we're, before we go into the book, let's go to the spirits book first, and we're going to do a little refresher, okay? So we're all going to be all on the same page when we get started. So if we go to chapter, to, to spirits book, uh, question number 659. The question is, so what is the general character of prayer? And I know Vanessa Saloni already talked about this, so we're going to do a little refresher, okay? So here are the answer of the spirits. Prayer is an act of worship, right? Worship to our creator, right? Praying to God is thinking of God. Wait a minute. If we are embedded into the creative thought of God, which is... The creation right so we are co-creators because we also think so if we're co-creators and we're immersed into God's thoughts of creation right then if we think about God that is a prayer because we elevate our thoughts and we're able to establish that connection see how that works the spirits explained to us very well so praying of praying to God is thinking of God drawing nearer to God right so we are in looking up in this little stairway of evolution to us and we're also uh, getting into the more sublime levels of thinking of unconscious right so it's putting oneself in communication with god right we are part of the creation right if we're part of creation how can we communicate with the creator right that is the process of prayer. That's what I explained here. So through prayer, we may do three things. Remember those three things, right? So we praise, we ask, and we thank. How beautiful is that, right? There's so many good things. Hello, Daisy. Good evening to you, too. And now we're going to go next question, uh, 661 from the Spirit's book, right? Um, so the question is, may one effectively ask God to forgive one's sin? So can I ask God to forgive my own mistakes? Right? That's the question. 
in Spirit's book. So the Spirit answered this. So God knows how to discern between good and evil, right? That sounds reasonable, right? So prayer does not hide what we've done, right? So remember, and this is interesting because humanity has been going over the same concepts for thousands and thousands of years. And for many generations that we incarnated here on Earth a long time ago, we were thought to believe that as long as we pray or as long as we do something generous to, you know, to, to the religious community that we believe, all of a sudden what we've done is going to be wiped out altogether. But wait a minute. Let's see what it's saying here. Well, it's not going to hide what we've done. We have to work for it, right? So the, going back to Spirit's book, those who ask God to forgive their sins do not receive forgiveness unless they change their conduct. Isn't God perfectly just? Remember the laws, right? So in a perfectly just system, we have to be responsible for what we do, right? But good deeds are the best prayers. For deeds are worth more than words, right? This is a very interesting concept because now we can do an act of prayer by elevating our thoughts and communicating with God in that moment that we're able to, to project our thoughts, right? But at the same time, there's an act associated with it, just like charity is an act of love you can actually promote a connection with the above by actually doing good things. Because by the same token, by the same time you're doing something positive, you're already establishing a connection with the above, right? Because what are you thinking when you're doing something very good? I'm pretty sure you realize that you, you, your thoughts are going to be quite elevated most of the time, right? Unless we're faking it. So we're not going to that now. Let's take it for granted that, you know, we're, we're, we're all doing good things. And whenever you're doing a very kind connection, good deeds, as the Spirit's explaining here, you automatically elevate your vibratory state, right? And by doing that, you establish what we just talked about, the communication, where you establish that current that will be represented of a prayer. Okay? So we're all so we're all learning, refreshing our minds, right? Of a lot of things. Yeah, sunshine, all good things come from God. And yes, of course, God is the creator, right? And we are here, right? We are the creation, right? And we're thinking, we're praising, right? And we ask too, because we're humble enough to understand that we need help, right? And we position ourselves in a way that we can accept that help, right? Because otherwise, you know, it's not gonna happen. Right, exactly, sunshine. So let's move now. Just another refresher, and I promise you, I'm gonna keep this short, because we're gonna go into this beautiful prayer on chapter nine today, right? Now, the reason why I wanna bring this, because this is incredibly important for what we're gonna talk about today, right? So question number 664 of the Spirit's book, Right? So this is what's going to happen here. So in this question, Lekardex is going to ask this. Is it any use praying for the dead, right? Or the suffering spirits, for suffering spirits? And if so, how can our prayers provide them consolation and shorten their suffering? Right? Now, why is this so important? What exactly Andrea Louise is doing here? Remember, guys, Andrea Louise is going, right? To, um, to a rescue mission, the Abyss, right? Where there are several characters in the book that are gonna be rescued. They're gonna go help Domenico in the last couple of chapters. And during that process, you know, there will be moments of prayer. So like a deck already asked that, right? That's question number 664 on the book. And this is what the spirits are gonna tell us, right? Oh, there's one more question, the same question. The next question is, do our prayers have the power to appease the justice of God, right? I mean, the answer is this. Prayer has no effect in changing God's design, right? We cannot pray to bend the laws of God. That doesn't happen. The laws are perfect, right? 
But, let me continue. But the soul for whom you pray experiences relief because it witnessed the interest you show in it, and because an unhappy soul is always consoled when it encounters other charitable souls who share in its suffering and share their love and, and, and their love in action, right? So when you're praying, you are always helping. Always, that's what you're saying, you know? And they'll feel relief. Remember what happened when the mother of Domenico approached them and started that rescue process that we learned so, so well from Carol. That's exactly what happened. There was some relief, right? And then in chapter eight, which we're not gonna be talking about today, but it's important for you guys to know, there's also moments where they describe several suffering spirits that were not rescued in a way that they were not really brought back into, uh, into the rescue outpost of Fabiano that day. But there were also there was a prayer that also uh, helped them, right? Cope and understand better what they were doing. Okay, but let's see what else the spirits are going to tell us here. Moreover, through prayer, you may incite it to repentance and desire to do what is needed to become happy, right? So when you're praying for someone who's suffering or another spirit or even yourself, sometimes. You are allowing this moment of repentance. You're bringing the energy that's needed to change, to the, the initial push that's sometimes needed to make people move, right? There's always this little push needed to make things move forward, right? It is in this sense that you can shorten its affliction if it on its part it contributes its own goodwill, right? So it bows by prayer. Such a desire to improve attracts to the suffering spirit other spirits who come to enlighten, console, and to give hope. Remember, look at this. Jesus prayed for the strange sheep. In doing so, he showed you that you are culpable if you do not pray for those who are the most in need. Hey, there's another very important concept here. So, we're always thinking about, you know, how can I help people? I don't know, I wanna, wanna do something. I wanna do something tremendous. I wanna, you know, donate a million dollars. You know, yes, there are several ways you can help people. But even if when you think that you cannot help someone at all, you say, well, this individual here can't do anything. That's it, not able to help, that's it. Hands up, no, no. Pray, right? That's the moment that, you know, obviously will help people. People need want to be helped so we can actually help them, right? But if you pray, you can do exactly what the spirits were saying here. You can still help them stealing good vibrations, bringing them this refueling of these good vibrations, the energy that is allowing them to do that step forward, understanding that they have their own, you know, they have their own energy, they have to move, they have to change, they have to repent, they have to do and correct the mistakes that we all do, right? So Jesus, when he did, so the example here saying that, well, if you don't pray, right, you're losing an opportunity, right? And that may be an opportunity that's very important for your life today. Now, when it, you want, I think we should take some some objective examples here, right? So let's say, you know, something happened. You're walking down the street and you see something and you witness something. You hear something. You know, sometimes it's not reasonable for you to intervene in situations and say, "Well, wait a minute, you're doing everything wrong." You know, Jesus told us that we're gonna do that and we're gonna change everything. You're gonna be a new person. That, you can't do that sometimes, right? It wouldn't be very appropriate to do things like this. But you're walking by, you see a situation that sometimes is not in connection with the laws of God. You can always vibrate in prayer. Or instead of going by and say, why are those guys doing that? Those guys are really strange. I'm going to get out of here, right? How about we do the opposite? We we'll say, well, those are spirits that may need some help. Let me pray for them, right? And for two seconds, you can raise your thoughts, focus, 
in our Creator. And through that connection of the scintillant, beautiful vibrations, you can project into an individual sometimes the help they need. Right? So that's what question number 664 talks about. Okay? All right, before we spend the whole night talking about the Spirit's book, we're going to start now on chapter 9 of the book, Workers of Life Eternal. Okay? And what happens in chapter 9? Let's do a brief summary here so we're all again um, at the same page, right? So, hello, Monica. I see you. Hola. I see you here. Uh, Argentina, you're very welcome. And everyone. Um, so in, 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 in the book, uh, in the, in the book, um, um, Workers of Life Eternal, Chapter 9, they're on their way back from their rescue mission to the abyss. And if you remember from now, from a couple weeks, a couple days that we're talking about this, you, you just remember that they are in an outpost helping in a rescue mission. And one of those individuals that they're helping is actually at the edge of a very dense, dark, and um, uh, a place where surrounded by a collection of negative thoughts that projects an imagery of, you know, mud, darkness, bad smells, and abyss. And there's a, it's a very, very negative imagery that is generated, and that is a direct effect of the collective thoughts of the spirits there are in that place, right? So they're coming back now, back to their uh, rescue outpost, right? And one of the things that Andrea Louise is concerned about, is particularly uh, in the last bit of chapter eight, they realize that they can't really rescue everyone because not everyone is ready for it yet. Uh, there are, uh, there is a process in place for that. Right? Remember we talked about this. You can't really go out there and fish out someone and say, right, you know, right now at this exact point in time, you're going to be a transformed individual. Can't do that. Right? Because that process requires inner transformation, understanding, you know, going through the cyclic uh, process of thoughts that sometimes are generated. So it's, it's a very complex process. So I do always realize that and understand that not all those spirits there um, can be rescued because they are in their own process of learning, you know, going through the consequences of their own mistakes, right? But at the same time, it's clear that they're sowing good. They're sowing good energies, prayers, thoughts, right? All these energies that are collectively going slowly, slowly, slowly. Remember like a little seed, right? You put it there, and every day you go there, put a little bit of water, put it in the sunshine, right? Bright sunshine, right? And, and, and then all of a sudden that little seed will start to grow, right? That's how it works. So in this rescue process, it's exactly the same thing, right? Um, and then, Directly from the book, there's a passage that will explain that. So Zenobia is going to say this. So tomorrow, those spirits will most likely be in an appropriate vibratory state to accept our shelter, right? And what is this, right? So I'll give you another daily example for this. Let's say one day you wake up and, you know, you're doing your daily things and your daily routine, and something all of a sudden upsets you a lot, but upsets you very, very much, right? From that time on, if you're not able to disconnect to that type of vibration that you're generating inside your mind, and let's say something happens, you know, when you drive in traffic for someone you like or your neighbor, something really throws you off that the morning, right? During that day, I can almost certainly guarantee you that if someone approaches you and say, you know, what's happening? You know, I want to help you. You know, why don't we come now and help the individual that you just got upset with? I'm pretty sure your answer is going to be no. I don't want anything to do with anyone right now because I'm quite upset. Okay? So that's what we call the vibratory. That's exactly what Andrea Louise is saying here. 
the vibratory state can be accepting or can be rejecting things, right? So if I'm a environment, if I'm vibrating in a very negative way, very dense, right? The thoughts are very negative. In general, that will prevent any type of help because I can't disconnect from that, right? But if I'm the opposite, then I can actually offer help, you know, I can learn things. So the important things for us in our daily lives is learning when are we vibrating, right, in a low vibratory state, and how can we flip it? How can we get out of it? Prayer is a great tool, and that's what we're learning, right? There are many other ways you can do it, right? An action of good. Do something good, right? The best remedy to get you out of that situation is actually doing something quite positive. Remember math? If you have a little negative thing, you have to do a positive thing, and then, but not only one, because if you have one negative thing, if you do one positive, you're going to be a zero, right? You're not actually moving anywhere. But if you have something negative, you have to do a little bit more, like two positive things, like something very significant. And then you can efface the multitude of mistakes. Remember? Someone said that, right? So that's basic math for you guys. Okay? So let's continue now in chapter nine of the book. Okay? So continues and always explaining here. Right? For us, we want the spirits that are suffering them to come of their own accord. Right? They have to be ready for that and accept that, right? So that in the future, when they're going through the work of regeneration, that's probably the most used word in spiritism nowadays, just because it represents a process that's very important to all of us. So they're going through the work of regeneration. They do not claim to be victimized at having been coerced into coming here. Oh, look at this. Now, when we're reading these stories about Andrea Louise, we really have to think about ourselves and our own society, right? How many examples you can think about people that are sometimes offered to do something, then all of a sudden they turn back and say, well, I was coerced, I was forced to do this. I didn't want to do this. I was just forced to do it, right? But if I come with informed consent, like ready thinking and ready for this and accept it, then obviously I'll be ready to be helped, right? So the spirits are talking about something that we do every day in our society, right? It's something very important, okay? Now, the last thing that she's going to say is this. Far and wide, so basically everywhere, we find God's compassion and justice. Right? Because obviously we have to be compassionate, right? It's clear for us, it's in the gospel, Jesus taught us, and that's something we'd be seated on our conscience since existence. But at the same time, we have to have the sense of justice, right? And that's the law of justice. Okay? So what is compassion? Do you guys remember that? It was good. Okay. And I think Zenobia in this book explains it in a way that I actually copy and paste and I use this this exactly same sentence sometimes when I need to kind of think about it. And if you guys want to do it, you're welcome to, right? So that's what Andrea is going to tell us is that compassion, the daughter of love. Ah, can you have compassion without love? No, right? It's the daughter of love. So it's a direct consequence from the acting of Loving, that's what it means being the daughter of love, right? Who always have compassion, who always wish to extend rescuing arms, right? Compassionate rescuing arms. Think about the picture of someone finding someone in rescue. But justice ah, is the daughter of law. Which law? Divine laws, right? So justice. Divine, the, the daughter of the law, will never do so without the corrective actions. Okay? So this is a very nice summary. Because it tells us this, that everything happens according to the divine laws. There's no way we can break it. Right? If you push against it, you'll be corrected. 
that's how the universe is governed from the high 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 end of all the galaxies and the planets and the laws that govern their creation all the way to us here living this particular moment in this planet the laws are exactly the same they're immutable they're perfect and we are learning them right just like we teach our little kids you know how to not jump off of the stair because they're going to get hurt they really want to do it but we have to say no there's a way they don't know yet right so we're the kids right we don't know about the laws yet we want to do things right because we're stirred so our conscious is starting to grow like a little little beam of light coming out of it so that comes with responsibility right and we're learning how to administer that okay all right so here we go so if you want to make note of that that's a good one for you guys to have around so you think about it okay but because today we're talking about just remind me prayers right and you can say marco Talk about prayers today. I know, right? We're gonna talk about prayers now. Okay. I hope everyone's still there. This beautiful Sunday night, nice warm night for us here in Toronto. I know. So let's keep going. So there will be now a prayer described in this chapter, which is quite different from the prayers that we talked about the last couple of nights, right? This prayer will be a prayer of Praise and gratitude. Okay, this is a prayer that's going to be uh, happening right after their mission. That when they went there to help other people, right? So they went there to help. Them. Now they're going to have the opportunity to praise God for the opportunity and thank Him, thank God, right, for this opportunity, right? And sorry for using Him. Doesn't make any sense for to thank God because you know God is not thing of it. Okay. Um, so here's a prayer that's gonna be directed in the same room that we had in you know in the previous chapter six. It's a room dedicated by prayer and it's, it's a prayer and it's a prayer service. So there's a very specific vibration of state. In this particular day, there are 35 spirits that are selected to participate into this particular prayer, right? And we know that when we pray together and we are all vibrating the same type of energy, same type of thoughts, we can obviously increase the vibrational uh, energy from all those prayers together. Yes, we can reach higher. We can, you know, we can do Remember that when Jesus is saying, you know, if you have faith as a little seed, what happens, right? Now, if you, if all of us, all collectively in the universe, had the same level of faith and connected the same way, well, we could do one, right? So think about that. So what are they doing? So they're praising, they're thanking, right, for the opportunity. So let's see how we're going to start here to pray, okay? The praise to our And we go... We'll stop and do some little explanations in between. Okay, so Lord of Life, right? That's how we're referring to God. Okay, and the reason why? Because He's the Creator. That's another way of saying that He's the Creator, right? Because life is a direct consequence of creation, right? And that's how it works. We so thank God for that. Overflowing with joy. Right, all over for the joy. Thank you for the blessing of each day. So they start, so in this moment, we'll start with a big thank you, right? Allow us to gather in your name this blessed night of happiness, right? And hope in order to express our endless gratitude. So it's a prayer of gratitude. We do not ask you, Lord, for benefits or privilege for ourselves. Look at this, how humble this is, right? We're doing this prayer. I'm not asking for anything from me. I don't want the privileges. I don't want to be special, right? I don't want anything that goes against the divine laws because I learned about it already, okay? Now, how many times we ask for things that are the direct opposite of that? 
right? And, you know, that's fine. We're in a process of learning, and that's what we're doing here. It's not that it's bad or good what you're doing. No, we're not talking about that. We're not judging. Remember, it's another law. You should not do that. But the idea is not to, is not to now, from now on, say, well, I'm going to be very careful about what I'm praying. No. We're, I'm not, I don't want to have anyone here not praying because now we're so afraid of saying things. Right? No, that's all we're doing. What we're doing is to give little hints, and this is a perfect one, to say, you know, what exactly you're asking. Just think about it. Two seconds. Like, what do you want? Right? So, in this case, the prayer is like, we don't want any privileges for ourselves. Wealthy as we are with your light and mercy. So, we're already wealthy. Right? That's what you're saying. With your light, which is feeling the room right now, and your mercy. Right? Instead, we beseech your majestic heart to grant us the gifts of balance and equity. Look at what they're asking for. Right? And how many times do you think about this? We ask you, or we beseech in this case, right, what the book is describing to us, the, the uh, gifts of balance and equity. Now, let's say we're going through a very tough time in life, and all of us do, right? Maybe if we, understanding this, start asking God to help us balance understanding, courage, and the energy to go through the trials and the difficulties and helping us find solutions that go in agreement with the laws of God, maybe that's what we should be thinking about the prayer, right? Instead of the old, old times where we've done many times that, God, get this thing out of my life, right? That's sometimes we do that, right? That's not an effective way of communicating, right? Because remember, we learned from the Spirit's book, we just talked about it. Prayers are not going to be the not going to be changing the directions of God, of the laws of God, right? So we have to go through some of these things. So they're asking here for balance and equity. Okay? Like you know, the same story. You have, you know, someone that's close to you, or you know, your co-worker, someone in your family, that you're like, you can't really get along. Like it's so hard. Oh, you know, I can't see this person. God, you know, make this person go away, right? <laughs> now we think about it. You know, it's not going to happen. The reason why we're together, exactly because we need to learn. We need to learn from each other, right? We need to learn to love and respect and all these things. So just to give you a little, a little understanding of this. Okay. So uh, grant us the gift of balance and equity. So that we may know how to distribute our divine inheritance. What is our divine inheritance? Love. Right? What do we get? What's the little seed we have? It's right here. I'll show you right here. Right? And not squander or not, you know, throw away, right? The glory of your gifts needlessly, right? So no wasting them. Okay, wasting of time, wasting of energy, wasting of thoughts, and so forth and so on. Like this is a perfect starting, right? Because we've, we've already summarized everything we know in the gospel and the spirit's book, right? Now. Okay, now we can move on. Strengthen that I asking again, right? So you already thanked, right? Now they're gonna ask me. So strengthen our concept of harmony so that we may be faithful co-workers. Is it co-worker? Because we are co-creators, right? And faithful, because if I demonstrate faith, I'm actually following the laws of God. So that's how I demonstrate faith in God, right? So that's the faithful co-worker. And then it continues. We raised ourselves from the abyss of the past, in other words, that's a beautiful playing with the words here because they're coming from the abyss, right? But what it's saying here is the abyss of the past. Now, 
here we are today living this beautiful incarnation right and for all those that are disincarnated right now and they're listening to they're, we're all living these experiences together okay so if we look in our past maybe not the very near past but the, the remote past we'll soon understand that we were there in the abyss in the abyss of the absence of love and we were there we were all there at some point we we're all lost in our thoughts at some point we may be right now right and this may be the moment that we need to make those positive changes and move forward right um so we'll continue here and and um so we raise ourselves from the abyss of the past through your watchful kindness and we are now here to serve you right that continues nevertheless father bent under the burden of the human tendencies that we have cultivated for thousands of years of emotional imbalance right so we cultivate it right the emotional imbalance we can neither renounce your corrective actions nor your paternal strength so that's it she's just reinforcing one more time that we cannot renounce the fact that we have to go through um our corrective actions we have to learn right a lot of things okay so alicia says you did the signals week okay um i hope everyone's okay there uh, everything's fine uh, let me know if things improve okay um now provide us so asking again provide us with a healthy atmosphere for freeing ourselves okay asking again mesmerized by our memories from the past so we can be mesmerized by the imagery of what we've done in the past right because we right now we forgot right and that's a good reason for that because if we remembered everything we wouldn't be leaving right now okay very often we fail to understand your sovereign and judicious will erase our selfish individualism so again the responsibility will fall back into our own shoulders and our selfish individualism is the root is the trunk the root and the trunk of the issues that we encounter in our experiences right so erase it or in other words help me erase that by changing right so that the consciousness of the universe may enlighten our hearts Another one now, take our reasoning to a higher level of understanding. Enable us to vibrate within the arena of your divine thoughts. Okay? And this is important here again because, um, hello Betsy, yes. It's on waves also, okay, I hear that, okay. I can do that. I think I know. I'm gonna try to fix that. Okay. So, um, the if if you if you think about the arena of the thoughts, right? That's where we're thinking right now. So, just think about it. Sometimes we, we keep saying this, right? That you know, um, you know, God's not not listening to me, right? So God's not helping me. No one's helping me, right? But in reality, the truth is, we're not listening, right? We're the ones that are not listening, right? So that's why we ask for um, this uh, help, right? That's why we need help here, you know, so we can turn on our thoughts and establish the connection, okay? So that's what they're, what they're saying here, okay? So let's keep going. So you have placed constructive words in our mouths and have filled our souls with light and tranquility so that we may cooperate in your work. In this shelter of fraternal love, you have given us fellow spirits devoted to the good 
and around our small task you have placed a multitude of the afflicted and suffering. Right? So they're describing their work. Oh Lord, how happy we, want, we are to be able to administer solace and enlightenment in your name. However, we beg you for inspiration and direction in light of the responsibilities of those who have received your stewardship of salvation. Now, this is a very important one, and I highlighted this here, okay? Teach us to act dispassionately, instill us respect for the authority you have given us, right? So we can help us. Help us free our minds from the individualistic ideas so that we may feel you near to us in the collective effort of our spiritual development. That's so beautiful. Look at this. Again, I'll repeat that. You know, free our minds, free our minds from individualistic ideas so that we may feel you nearer to us. So how can we, so how can we feel God in our lives? This is explained to us. That's a prayer. So help me, help me, God. That's what you're saying. So I can start thinking about other. Remember, love one another, love your neighbor. We talked about this. Stop thinking always about the me first, so I can actually get close to you, God. Right? And that's exactly what they're asking here in this part of the prayer. And that's a beautiful part, okay, of the prayer. And every time she continues, our actions unduly reveal the interference of our free will in fulfilling your laws, reprehend us, so that we may not continue in thoughtless misguidance. So, again, I have to be ready to understand when I'm wrong. Okay, and I have to make corrective action. I have to make turns, right? Very important. Because... If we're in a point that we cannot listen to, <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. If we're in a point that we're so closed off that we can't listen to people telling us, you know, maybe that's not a good idea, or God sending signals to us, right? Maybe that's not a good idea, or my guardian angel telling me here, right in my ear, saying maybe that's not a good idea. If I'm completely impervious to those uh, situations and I continue on a pathway that's going against you know, what is the des design for me, then I'm in big trouble, right? So I, this is a type of situation that it's very difficult to help. And I we should always think about it and pray so that God, God can help us not follow that path. Okay, so I can clear my mind to always thinking broadly, always thinking about everything, you know, the signs, the, the signs that we receive every day, you know, because those are important too, right? How many times do our angels come here, right, in our daily lives, and they tell us, like, listen, and, and Der Luis has a very long collection of those in the books too. We're trying to help you, you know, we're doing this. Like when you're sleeping, we're taking you over, right? To because of Lar Fabiano, we're taking you to other places. We're helping. We're talking to you. We're having meetings. Like we're discussing things. I'm telling you, like I'm giving hints, right? Nothing's helping. So now your free will is taking much so over that situation that we can't change it, right? So let's ask for help, so we don't go into that trap. That's a very difficult one, right? Because we always have to be listening. So it's not that God's not doing something. They're doing everything all the time for us, 100%. They're always 100% of the game. We're not, right? So we have to be understanding of that, right? And pay attention to those signs, okay? So let's continue. It's a beautiful prayer. We're, all, we're kind of halfway through it now. <clears throat> so... 
We are your frail, continue the prayer, we are your frail and trusting children. And I love the children imagery because I think that's exactly what we are, right? All of your resolutions regarding us are excellent and beautiful, right? Again, praising God. So remember, we praise, we thank, we ask. Uh, grant us, therefore, asking now, enough vision in order to behold our happiness in your intentions, whatever they might be, right? So I'm also asking that I can see through the eyes that, not this eyes right here, but I can actually see why things are happening and I can learn how to deal with that, right? There's always a reason for things to happen. Nothing happens for a chance. Chance does not govern the universe. I can tell you that. Okay? So there's always reasons for things to happen. And we have to do the best in every situation. We have to learn, right? Maybe this the situation that we have to go through. And we, we don't need to explain why in details of the past and what, what was done. And, but we have to, when we are into a situation, we have to learn with that and move forward right so they're asking here grant us therefore enough vision in order to behold our happiness and your intentions whatever they might be we are humble servants of your glory of wisdom right in a thousand different ways in this storehouse of consoling peace we receive your indirect presence by which those who weep and suffer are cared for so because that's what they're doing. They're caring for those who we've been suffering that particular time and moment. And as we understand from this book, you know, many of the spirits that are being rescued here have long ties and connections to other places. So we can, <coughs> sorry for that, we can be in situations like this sometimes of suffering, you know, and we have to learn, we have to learn how to move forward, okay? O oh, compassionate uh, Father, what greater happiness could there be than to spread with our Lord Jesus Christ your loving and redemptive blessings? So that's what, what we should take now. Okay? What greater happiness could be than actually doing what Jesus told us to do? Think about this for a moment. Right? What greater happiness there could be, right? And then it continues, what richer school than this place is? It is a school. We are in school, right? Where we can joyfully learn to practice the divine, the sublime gift of giving. We can do that every day. I can tell you this, right? Don't feel shy, right? Just think about it for a moment. You know, I'll give you an example. Next time you're walking down the street and you hear something or see something that sometimes, you know, may, may be may not so good, negative, you know, some experiences that are not positive, people are aggressive or this or that, you know, sometimes yelling or, or any, any kind of scenario that you can possibly imagine instead of, you know, just kind of moving away and kind of judging, pointing the finger, pray. You, that is a perfect example when you're in the school and you're learning the gift of giving, even if it's a two-second prayer, you're giving, right? That's part of charity. You're doing something, okay? They're actually asking this prayer for God to help them learn with that whole situation, right? That's so important to all of us, okay? So this is a beautiful example of a prayer of praise and gratitude, right? And they continue now. Uh, and the end of the prayer saying, by increasing our joy, stimulating our courage, and blessing our hope, you have furthermore enabled us, dear Lord, to attend to hearts interested in soothing and comforting beloved spirits who have strayed from our company in the never-ending course of time. We, their souls, turn toward your generosity. We are eternally grateful. Again, praising, thank you. May you be praised for millennia or upon millennia and be glorified by all the beings of creation. Your servants in this house of edification, thank you 
for these new value opportunities to work. So how many times we think for opportunity to work, right? Actually, how many times we miss an opportunity to work to start with, okay? Your servants in this house, you know, uh, of edification, thank you for the opportunity and they hope for the continuation of your blessings. May your eternal light be reflected through the infinite universe. Amen. So that's the prayers that Nobia uh, had in chapter 9 is a prayer of praise and gratitude, summarizing to us in a brilliant way what we learned in the Spirit's book about the characteristics of the prayer, what we should have in a prayer, and also teaching us that about the opportunities we have to act, right, to help, to love, and what we should be asking God in those moments, right? Now, obviously, this is a extremely complex, well thought, and and a, a prayer that is certainly by a spirit who has the capacity at that moment to put in words a lot of thoughts that we sometimes cannot. So, but now for us, if we can do it, even if it's a few seconds, but we can summarize the ideas in our thoughts and elevate them to God, we're doing the, the end result is the same, right? We're doing the same thing. So let's do it more often, right? So that's the message for today. Let's implement a little exercise now during the next days of doing this as part of the routine so we can get rid of our individualism, remember? We can elevate our thoughts so we can actually listen to God instead of just saying that they don't listen to us, right? We can attract by good vibrations back all the spirits that want to help us. We can actually listen to a guardian angel as doing like extra work, right? Trying to help us. And we keep banging our heads against the wall and they keep saying, no, don't do that. And we keep doing it. So let's put this all together into a little package and start our transformation, right? So for all of you guys out there, I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity of being with you tonight. Um, this has been uh, a fantastic journey through illuminated prayers. Tomorrow we're going to have our beautiful friend Carol again. Uh, continue on uh, on our 12th day of the Illuminated Prayers on the book uh, Workers of Life Eternal, right? And for all of you out there, I would like to wish you a good night. And we're going to end with a little prayer, as we always do, okay? So we can all, you know, take this, this moment Right, to put in practice while we've been studying, right? This is like a good example. That's what we're doing here. Okay. So, dear Father, Mother God, I would like to thank you the opportunity of being here tonight in this exercise of learning, helping, teaching, and with this acts of love and charity being enacted today by a group of people that are here to learn. May we all continue with this blessing opportunity of life. And may we all put into practice the words that we're learning so we can act the act of love, which is charity. May God bless us all, and so be it. All right. Thank you all. You have a great night, right? And you guys will be with Carol tomorrow. Continue this illuminated prayers. Okay. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you, Sunshine. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. A little hand in prayers for you guys and everyone that's that's online with us. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>